Hey guys, it's Mei Mei. You might have seen my Q&A video recently where I said that there were some questions that caused me to have some video ideas. Well, this is one of those ideas. So someone asked, where do you get your card inspiration from? And I know that there's Pinterest and there's all these, you know, blog posts we put out and all the videos we put out for you guys to inspire you. But I want to show you a couple of things that I do that I think is kind of fun and see what you think. So starting with this piece of paper and the picture I'm going to put in the screen. <laughs> so we were at breakfast one morning in November of 2019. That's when this photo was taken. And I saw this on the wall and went, ooh, that's a good card idea. So I snapped a photo of it and it's like an advertisement for our local Jack's restaurant that they have on their wall. And I was going to use it for a card. So let's do that. So I don't really know where to start. I'm just going to play and let you follow along. But I thought I'd use this green color. I kind of like this green lately. And what I'm going to do is just cut four squares in different shapes. So I'm going to start with a fairly large one. So I'm going to do like a two by two and a half. We'll do one square that size. That'll be kind of my largest square from the picture. And then I think I'll do one, maybe one and a half. Let's see what it looks like. And maybe put it here. I'm just kind of mimicking the photo. Um, let's, uh, do I want to use the square one? I might use that square. And then just need another piece for there. I don't know. I'm going to see how this works. I, I am always looking at things around me. Um, I'm going to do this in at one and three fourths. I'm always looking at things around me. Hmm, watch this. Instead of wasting that much paper, let's go to this side. And fashion and magazines and um, television shows and anything around me can inspire me. So check this out. That's kind of that layout. Now, what I want to make sure of is that this will fit on an A2 size card. So I happen to have a base here. I'm going to lay this base and just see if this will lay out. Because I also want to put a, um, a mat around each one of these. Because the pictures, the image, the picture has a frame. So there's a little black edge all around. And I think it looks really pretty. And I want to see if I can kind of mimic that myself. So this is feeling a little bit large. A little bit big for what I'm wanting. So I'm going to have to trim some of this down a little bit because I want that kind of broken shape from the image. So this, I'm going to trim everything down by about a quarter of an inch. So let's just start with that. So don't worry about these little scraps you're making. And besides that, do this from your scrap bin, but save these if you think you'll use them. I typically will. So I'll bring that one in a little bit. This guy might be okay. This one is too wide. So let's try bringing him in maybe a good eighth of an inch and see how he looks because I want him to hang over the edge and then this guy's way too big he's too um wide so let's bring him down about like that now this is really really this is me really mimicking an image that I've seen which I think is kind of a cool thing to do but and you may not think that's so cool but this is kind of where I get inspiration from all right, so there is that. I think I can add a tiny little black frame to all of those and still fit them on the card. So now let's do the fun part, the stamping. So before I stamp, I'm gonna flip all of these over and mount them together. First, let me <laughs> put them back like they go because I have forgotten. I think this one goes here, and then this one goes here, and this one goes here. Okay, so I wanna mount these together, but upside down, okay? So what I'm gonna do is take some purple tape. Now I wanna remind you, <laughs> When I finish this video, I may go, oh, there's an easier way to do what I did. But this is the first time I'm doing this. So this is another thing I do. Sometimes I will find these projects to bring to you. I will do them and then I'll go, oh, here's an easier way for me to teach it to them. So in this video, if you're noticing that things are taking me a little longer or seem to be a little more difficult, that could be why. If I did this again, I might find an easier way to do it. All right, so I'm gonna stick those two guys together really super tight because we're going to stamp over the whole piece, because if you remember from the photo, the image of Alabama that was on there was stuck really close together. And these two are going to line up at the same height, but they're not going to be centered on the top. I'll show you what I mean. So these two were off a little bit from center, so these lines here did not match up. What actually happens is this scoots over a bit. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to do this. Now, this is a, a kind of a process, but I think it's going to be fun. And I, I was inspired by that photo, and I never did anything with it, and I just really wanted to. All right, so there we go. There are all of those guys. I'm not going to worry about that tape. It'll be fine. So this is where I want to stamp my image. Now i got to decide what's going on there. So I kind of want to do this hot air balloon, but I want to make sure it will all fit. So what I'm doing is from the layers, I'm taking the largest 
um, layers of the stamp to lay them out and see if it'll work. So that gets me the balloon and then I'm going to need the basket, which will be down here. I have plenty of room for that. So I think the um, hot air balloon would be really cute on here. So let's do that. Now in the inspiration picture, the state of Alabama was here and it was done in a solid color, just green. So because of that, I'm going to do my hot air balloon in a solid color as well. And I think I'm going to do it in a dark gray. So I think I'm going to do it in Morning Mist from Versaclair. I'll put that there so you can see what that looks like. I think this will be a good color for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the body of my hot air balloon. And I'm not going to stamp both pieces. Let me show what I mean by that. This hot air balloon has two pieces. It has the outside of the stripe and then it has the inside of the stripe. I'm going to leave the inside off. I really won't need it for this one. But this is going to get me started. So I'm going to ink this guy up. And I will build around this. So all I need to make sure of is I leave myself room for everything from this guy. All right, so I'm going to hope that I'm right. I'm going to do it somewhere about like that. <laughs> We're there now. It is what it is. I think I might be a little bit off, but we'll see. All right, so there's the bottom of the balloon. And now using the same color, I'm not going to change my color. I'm just going to keep building. I am going to leave a little bit of a separation between the stamps so there's a little line. Normally, you might try to match them up exactly with like a color, but see how I'm using the same color and I'm going to leave that little line in there so that way I have a little separation. Now, we'll do the top. Also, leaving a little line separation just because I'm using all the same color. Oops, take to myself. See how that kind of makes a difference to have that little line between it? So, I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to go back and I'm thinking with, do I want to do this with black? I could do this with black, but it might be too much. I think I'm just going to do it with gray and see what happens. This could be an epic fail, but this is the fun part, right? Let's just see. So this guy is the ropes. And I'm going to try to line it up a little bit. Line it up here. It's not going to be perfect. Let's just see what happens. That's not bad. That looks good. Okay, and then I know where to put the basket at the bottom. So ink up the basket and it gets connected here. So I just had room. I just had room for my little hot air balloon. Okay, this guy probably won't show if I do it in gray, but let's just see. It might show on top of there. This is the piece that goes on the top to look like ropes at the top. And it might. I don't know if it'll stay there, but for now you can kind of see it and I think it looks kind of cool. All right, let's put this ink away for a little bit and let's work on making the little mats for this. So I'm gonna take all of these off of my purple tape. Don't worry about that. That's not gonna show in the back. I did not do a very good job of um, getting the sticky off of that. I usually do it on my jeans, but I didn't do it on that one. So there's my image with some separation around it. I'm gonna move that to the side and I pulled out of my scrap pile some black with the same um, check, and you know I'm all about the check lately. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run around and I'm gonna glue these guys down to the page. And I just wanna make sure I leave myself 1 16th at least, because I'm gonna use my perfect layer guides to cut these out, so that way I don't have to measure anything. So there's one. And I think I'll go ahead and cut it out so I don't waste any paper. So using my perfect layer guides and the 1 16th mark, I'm gonna lay that beside the paper, because I don't want much of a frame, I just want a little bit. And I'm just gonna run my pen blade over that several times till it cuts through. There we go. And then I'm gonna turn it and keep going all the way around till we get that 1 16th inch frame. So you can see here, I got that 1 16th of an inch frame all the way around. So I'm gonna do that to all of my pieces. So here I have my pieces all matted. They look really cool like that too. It's hard for you to tell on this uh, dark um, matte, but they look cool. So let's get these lined up like they're supposed to go. That one there, that one there. I'll get it right in a second. So there we go. There's kind of my image laid out with the mats on them. What I need to decide now is a sentiment and what I want to put behind it. I'm not really sure. Um, I have a couple ideas, so let me see and we'll get right back together. So the sentiment's pretty easy. I want to use the sentiment from the stamp set that says, hope this card lifts your spirits. So I'm going to stamp that in black at the top. And I'm going to do black on the sentiment so you can really see it. Matter of fact, I'm going to move this all out of the way so I can see what I'm doing and get that lined up nice and straight. Hope this card lifts your spirits. 
And that's not exactly where the sentiment was on this inspiration piece. It kind of overlapped, but I think that works really well. Okay, now for the background. So for the background piece, I think I'm gonna use the clouds from the same stamp set and just cloud this whole card base and not actually put a layer down. I think I need more space to place those pieces. So I pulled out my Tumble Glass Distress um, Oxide ink and I'm gonna use it for the clouds in the background. And it's not gonna be a perfect image because it's oxide for one. It's gonna be pretty good, but because it's oxide, it won't be perfect. Um, and because it's a solid image, but I think that'll be cool to kind of have that broken feel of the little clouds. Now, if you don't have the cloud stamps, if you don't have the stamp and you're using something else, you can always like make yourself a little kind of um, template or a little stencil for clouds and just go around and kind of ink it instead of stamping it. That'd be cute too. I should have put down my work service protector. Did not do that. We can remedy that pretty quick. I'll just slide it under there. That's much better. I only have one spot to clean up now. Again, remember often on the page that what that's what makes the card look like real designer paper. taking these little guys off. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe my work surface before I make a mess because I do not wanna pick that up in the card underneath. So get that cleaned off. All right, so here is my card base. This is what I wanted here, those little, our little framed images too, our little matted images. All right, so isn't that cute? That's cute just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna foam the back of all of these pieces and then we'll put them together. I think I'm just gonna do a single layer of foam on them. I don't think they need to be popped up too much more than that. I'm going to go ahead and peel the backers off so I can just place them. This might be a bad idea in hindsight. I might should have placed them and then done this. But if I did it wrong, you do it the other way. <laughs> okay, this is my corner piece. I'm not going to press anything down. I'm just going to sit it for a minute and just see where we get this. This little piece will go somewhere like this. Then this little piece goes somewhere like this. And this little guy. Okay, so I can see I need to move this up. So just really quick, I'm gonna pick this one up. I did not squish it down, remember? It's gonna move that guy up and maybe over a little. Again, not squishing. Pick this little guy up. Move it about right there. Then I'm gonna pick this little guy up. Move him about right here. Then we can bring this guy back and see if he'll fit now. That's not too bad, actually. The bottom pieces are really good. I might bring these in a little more up here. Yeah, I like that lower. I'm, I'm sticking that one down. I like it there. Let's bring this one down a little lower. Now, after doing this, picking up and laying down, you might decide you want to add a little glue. I don't think I'm going to need to, but I think we'll be all right. So look at that. That's kind of cool, right? That's a very different card for me. I've never made a card that looks like that, but I think it's kind of neat. And it's totally using that inspiration photo, which I'll put in the picture. I'll put in for you now. Now, what would I do different? So looking at this card now, after I made it one time, I don't like this color cardstock. I think I would do this in pink. And I think if I had done this in pink, I would really love this card. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll remake one and show you how it looks like with the pink. So here it is in pink, and I think I like the pink better, but now that I look them both together, I like them pretty much the same. Now notice that they're not perfect and how I messed up a little bit. Like I noticed that I cut this one smaller here and cut this one bigger here and yada yada. It doesn't matter, it's still super cute and it was still inspired by the same photo. But, and I don't even know how I did that actually. I thought I did it right until I looked at it on camera. <laughs> so there you go. That is one way of getting inspiration. Now this one is a step out maybe. I don't know that everybody would be inspired by something like this, but it's just an example. Anywhere you go, riding around your town, 
um, going to friends' houses, the way they decorate. Maybe they have a, a something on the wall that's so pretty that just strikes you. You can take a photo of it. I have another inspiration. I cannot wait to do that card for you guys. And um, it's one of, I think it's going to be super fun. So I'll be bringing that one to you real soon too. But for today, there is our inspiration card. One place to get inspiration. Look everywhere. Look everywhere you go. Snap photos and then use them for your inspiration. I hope that was fun. Um, if you liked it, let me know in the comments. If you want to see more of these things where I take images that are inspiration and turn them into a card. And um, also, don't forget, we have some places you can send cards to. So I'm going to link that video in the description below so you can go get the information on where to send your cards to. And these two are perfect for something like that. So these need to go in the mail. All right, guys. I'll talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.